okay uh, uh, guys uh, good afternoon and uh, uh, wishing a very happy new year to all our friends from uh, tamil nadu bengal kerala assam and uh, any other place which i'm really not aware who's celebrating their new year so uh, a very happy new year to all of you uh, at this session ask me anything we received a few questions which we will share with which we will start with is there are, if there are any more questions please put it up on chat uh, but along with the chat i would request you to please say to whom is the question directed to uh, and uh, that's that's uh, the way we will go about it so i i will st start reading the the, the questions um, uh, partho bhushan and uh, peter you can keep your cameras on uh, so that uh, people can see you uh, when vijay? you ask a question vijay yeah Um, is there any specific questions for specific coaches, or is just in general? Uh, there are some general questions. There are some specific questions as right. well, which gives them. So I'm going to take it step by step, uh, right. and uh, we will uh, uh, we will move around it. In in fact, if there are any other questions people wish to ask, please put it up in the chat window, and also tell to whom you are addressing that. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, I um, I'm starting with. Um, Uh, a, a question for all the uh, all the coaches. You can answer it one by one. Uh, we'll go in the order of P uh, Peter, Partha, and followed by Bhushan, so that uh, there is a certain um, decorum and there's no cross speaking, right? So the first question is: uh, Do you see a spark in any of the current batch of swimmers in GAF who can go all the way? And when they mean all the way, they're talking about Asian Games or an Olympic medal, or is it just too early to comment? So you want to start with that, Peter? Um, in my squad, I have um, some very good swimmers. Um, Asian age level, definitely. Um, Olympics is another kettle of fish, um, but I have some extremely talented athletes in my program. I'm looking towards Tokyo next year, and also the Commonwealth Games in 2022. Uh, Parto sir. Your mic is off, Parth. Okay, uh, it's the same question, Vijay. Right? Can you repeat the question once again? Just a second. Uh, the question says that: um, Do you see a spark in any of the current batch of swimmers who can go all the way? And when they mean all the way, they are talking about Asian Olympic Games medal, or they say, is it too early to comment? Uh, uh for me i would i would say there are many swimmers in my squad who i have seen some spark but again when you are talking about age group swimmers we are talking about their development in terms of physical and psychological also in next couple of years and uh, with that grow we can kind of thoroughly comment on something but of course there are about 6 to 7 swimmers whom we have identified for upcoming asian games and um, 2024 olympics Yeah, coach Bhushan. So, so when it comes to Bangalore, we're just a year and a half old center. We have a couple of kids who can do well. I think we will take another two more years to um, have a good set, good crop of uh, swimmers at that level. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, so the next question, which I want, uh, which which has been asked, at times it is noticed that a swimmer is able to perform better in heats or trials. But not able to maintain their personal best in the finals. Why does this happen? And this is open to all coaches. We will go through the same order. So we want to start with you, Peter. This is from Aryan Jaiswal. So can you just ask the question again, please, VJ? So at times it is noticed. At times it is noticed that a swimmer is able to perform better in the heats or in trials, but not and but not able to maintain his personal best timings in the finals. Why does this happen? Okay, it's a lot of factors: um, nerves, experience, um, self-belief. It takes a long time to get the confidence and experience to compete at a national level, at a high level. The more you do it, the more experience you get, and the more you know, opportunities you get, you're going to improve. As long as you believe, listen to your coach, try to improve and do your best, that's all you can do. Sometimes you'll have success. Sometimes you won't have success. It's all about learning and educating yourself how to become a better swimmer and a better person, and just keep knocking at the door 
until someone finally answers it. Uh, Coach Partha, uh, Coach uh, Bhushan, yeah. uh, you got a camera on, right? Yeah, okay, fantastic. So, yeah. uh, uh, Coach Partha, would you like to answer this? Yeah, I mean, uh, see, uh, if a swimmer is doing pretty well in the heat, that means physically he's capable. So uh, the factors comes either from mind or from wrong nutrition and not from or re not resting properly. So these are the factor which comes in. I think uh, swimmer need to uh, be carefully observant towards whether they're resting properly after their heat and whether they're having enough water or stuff like that to ensure their nutrition. And the mind management, what we have discussed, whether they have done it properly, whether they have a high level of competition anxiety, which may turn out to a failure. They are worried or uh, have the fear of the other person. That is something they need to look at. Yeah, uh, if I have to answer this question, I would say that the kid has to be mentally strong. And see, your input is the output. If you've done a good job in the practice, that means when you're given a set of 10 repeats, so it can be hundreds or fifties. If you do too fast, one slow, too fast, one slow, too fast, too slow, it doesn't work like that. You need to be giving 100% in the practice. And again, it depends on the age of the kid. You have to race very often, very often. You cannot say I'm not getting better when you're 10, 11, 12. You need to keep racing. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I move on to the next question. Can, can I just add two cents to that as well, um, Vijay? You know, oh, sure. looking at all of the sports that I've worked with, I've worked with Olympic gold medalists and world champions and world number ones and all kinds of top athletes around the world. And there's one very common finding that I find with all the athletes that do really, really, really well is that they train the way they want to compete. So if you expect to swim really fast in the heats and really fast in the finals, then you need to train like in competition. Exact Bushin is saying, if you push hard now and then you don't push hard in the next set and then you push hard in the following one and then you take a rest, then that's how your body's going to learn to swim. And then when you want it to go hard and hard and harder in a competition, it's going to say, but we haven't done this before, so I'm not used to doing this. So it's very, very, very important to practice the way that you want to race. And that's why all the coaches are constantly shouting at the swimmers because they're trying to condition them in training to have the right physical and mental preparation and fitness for the competition. That's the end goal of the, all the reason why they are constantly at you on the side of the swimming pool. I'll just add to that, right, that what he just said. We always talk about mirror. You've got to mirror your training and your competition. That's the secret. You must mirror. You must put yourself under pressure and training so you can actually compete under pressure at race day. Would you agree to this question here? Um, someone says, recovery during the competition. Uh, you you okay. have a list of questions with you? Yes, yes okay. we are going in a specific order. Uh, okay, but okay, coming up right. on to what was spoken previously, uh, there's a question okay. again by Park Jen. He says, uh, should we put more efforts in the heats or finals, like medium speed in the heats, or max efforts in the heats and the same in the finals? Again, all coaches can take it one by one. Okay, depending on the um, athlete, of course, uh, depending on the athlete, um, you have to judge yourself if you want your athlete to go hard in the heats or swim to get a lane in the final. Uh, this comes with experience, and you listen to your coach. Yeah, some coaches want you to go hard on the heats and also hard on the final. Some coaches want you to control the heats and then go hard on the final. Some coaches will want you to go, you know, front end speed or back end speed, right? Mm -hmm. It's really important to have a great relationship with your coach and listen to what your coach has to say to get the, to get the best possible results. Good part time. Yeah, I totally agree with Peter in this. I think uh, he mentioned it correctly. So it's all about the need of the athlete, which coach will determine, of course. And based on that, you know, there are certain cases where we are not sure whether the swimmer is going to reach the final, right? So we may <coughs> want the swimmers to go all out in the heat. In a lot of cases, we want to see that how well he can swim fast in the heat under pressure and then try to find out the weakness of the swimmer in that moment and then try to judge and give them the feedback for better final. So, and sometime, of course, uh, we want them to be kind of relaxed in the heat and 
ensure that they give their best in the final so these are the strategy what is very individual so we cannot say for a particular swimmer on the you know it, it's not general it's it has to be very uh, customized for swimmers and of course based on the coach's judgment yeah i fully agree with what peter said it has to be in consent with the coach <clears throat> and at the same time it depends on which meet you're racing at if it's a low key meet it doesn't matter you want to go you want to take it is in the heats and then go hard in the finals and in case if you have a back to back event then you have to definitely sit and talk to your coach and then decide how you want to race in the heats and how you want to take up the finals and i've seen a lot of kids like if they come for a competition to break the records they would definitely if they have two 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 finals in the evening they prefer to actually break one in the heats and one in the final so they go one fast in one fast heat one slow heat and one fast and good finals okay the next question um recovery between competitions heats and finals what's the best practice do you have specified foods peter, peter uh, let, let me take the questions in a specific order i have it uh, okay. so we'll come to this later yeah one second so there is a namrata from gaf gsc the question is uh, what do you think about or how do you keep your mind positive calm and cool while standing on the diving board just before the race um my swimmers rehearse what they have to do as he and i said before and bush said before and partha says before right if you've done the work you got nothing to fear believe in your coach listen to what your coach has said to you before you go to the race execute what you have to do have confidence in your own ability you can't control anyone else's race you can only control what's between your two legs can't control what anyone else does at the bottom of the line peter unmute peter unmute control deeply peter uh, unmute yourself it. guys I request you not to mute any coaches So do I answer again? Yeah. Okay. When you get behind the blocks, as Partha has said, and Bush has said, and, and Heath has said, right? If you train hard and you mirror your training and your racing, you have nothing to fear. You will execute the job perfectly. You must believe in yourself, believe in what you have done, listen to your coach. You cannot control what anyone else does in the final except yourself. Don't worry about anyone else. Don't worry about any outside influences on you. Just control what you have to do and and take care of the task at hand. What Partha? Yeah, I I believe the same thing. I think uh, uh, they should believe in themselves. And some other thing they can do to ensure that uh, they don't choke or they don't fail is in front of the starting block. They should do some visualization at least 2 hours before the race and think that's that's some um, some kind of tool which will be very helpful another they think they can do they can do long breathing to ensure more oxygen goes inside their body uh, probably 5 to 7 minute before the event which will ensure that you know their nervous system is also getting enough oxygen to control the anxiety yeah um, um what what is a competition competition is just a replication of your practice you have well prepared you spend so many hours in the water doing the same repeats up and down you should be well prepared you must have done all your preparation right in the practice you just go on the block you know, just go there to win okay yeah okay perfect um there is this question saying will there will there be a way where we can have a milestone chart for each child training at gaf in terms of knowing their target for the next level of swimming or dry land as being a parent many a times we are curious to know the object evaluation report of our kids thanks now before we uh, go to the uh, coaches on this i think uh, we should realize that each of uh, the swimmers in gaf uh, need to be in constant touch with their coach uh, we will we don't have a kind of a system where uh, anything of this kind is in public but i'm going to leave it to the coaches to answer this on an individual level uh, coach peter Okay, I didn't really get the whole question, but I'll try and answer it. Um, in my squad, I have um, chats to my squad members on a regular basis. It's important that the coach and the swimmer have a strong relationship. Also, the coach should have a relationship with the parents as well. Um, so the parents are clear 
what their child's doing right and wrong, so forth, so on. I think you know, communication is the key. Uh, I know that I have you know, good times with my parents and bad times with my parents, right? But as long as you, you know, constantly communicate with your swimmers and parents, I think everything will be okay. Doctor. Yeah, I think both uh, myself, uh, Bhushan and Peter, we all uh, communicate with the kids and uh, the kids know their short term plan or goal and kids know their long term goal. So that has been communicated with the kids on individual basis. I'm sure we all do that. Um, what are their goal or what we are aiming for them? So uh, I take it forward to Bhushan. Yeah. Vijay, can you just repeat the question, please? It says, um Will there be a way where we can have a milestone chart for each tra child training at GAF in um, terms of knowing the target for next level for swimming okay. or dry land? Okay. See here, I would. Um, the training is just not about being in the water and listening to the coaches. And I would say I always talk about three eyes: listen to the information, do the intensity, and make a make the interval. Intensity, information, intensity, and interval. If these things are followed in the practice. The rest is all fine. And we have seen a lot of kids who are improving on the dry land. The kid who used to do 30 push-ups in 30 seconds is able to do 35 push-ups in 30 seconds. But his time in the 50 freestyle has remained the same. So this is where we need to concentrate. So when you say milestone, I would say you should look at your aerobic condition. If you're able to swim a 1500 zone 145 now, can you be able to swim the similar set and 140 in about a month's time. Okay, just add to what um, Partha yeah. and Bush have said. We do have um, sheets available for parents, what squad they qualify for. So we have a performance squad qualifying time and a national um, age group qualifying time. So they're available on the website. Uh, uh, just to add to this, I think it is necessary that all parents maintain a relationship with the coach of the, of the child in whichever batch you are. And you know, and and work this out uh, because it is not right to uh, put this information on public. Heath, would you like to add something to this? Oh, I think Heath is not there. Okay, uh, I'll go to the um, the next question. Uh, all three centers, swimmers. I, I sorry, I am here. My uh, speaker was just on mute. Can you just repeat that again for me, Vijay, so that I can understand the context properly? I just didn't hear the question clearly. Sure. sure. It says, will there be a way in which we can have a milestone chart for each child training at GAF in terms of knowing their target for the next level for training or dry land? We're working towards that. Uh, you know, basically, effectively, what you're talking about is data science and, and putting together all of the performance metrics of that individual swimmer the problem at the moment is that it, it's very labor intensive and that means that we need lots of sports scientists and data scientists all running around the pool, which is not really feasible at the moment. We are working on a plan that by the end of the year we should have software in place that can help us to collect a lot of data for all of the swimmers. Um, and some kind of uh, a middle ground we might be we're experimenting with different kinds of wearable technology as well to help us to collect all this data and then once we've got all the data in place uh giving it to the coaches and then and having it available for athletes on a dashboard an athlete management system dashboard where they can look at all of their results and they can have they can set goals for the next season in discussion with their coaches and stuff so i think we just need a little bit more time to really lay this out in black and white for everybody but we are working on it oh thank you um i go to the next question it says um all three centers uh the swimmers from all three centers can for okay sorry uh they want to know the overview of the uh, gaf program in the next to 12 18 months from the following perspective all three centers swimming following the same schedule and tools for diet and dry land training procedure to access GAF central resources for consultation for the kids. Uh, before the coaches, I would like to just uh, come in and uh, uh, understand it from an operational perspective. All the three centers are essentially very different. Uh, the Bombay Center has it uh, as its own set of challenges. We just moved from uh, uh, from from our uh, old pool to uh, a wonderful facility at the GSC. Uh, 
but we have limitations of timings at delhi we we are more of a high performance center where entry is limited and uh, the infrastructure is totally different kids stay within the, most of the kids stay within the complex a uh, bangalore um, uh, the, the again the timings uh, are different and we've just been a year old if you observed in the last Bridget, few days uh, the gym know. has been revamped and we are working towards various Bridget, things we can't hear you. Yeah. You can't hear me. Hello, can you hear me, Peter? We can actually. We can. We can. We can hear you. I think it's just, I think it's just Peter that can't hear you. Yeah. Okay. You must be having a signal issue. Okay. So, uh, so uh, from a from an operational perspective in GAF, uh, our our uh, our point is that all of these uh, well our aim essentially is to ensure that all the uh, all the centers are exactly the same, and we are working towards this. We need to appreciate that the challenges in each center are different, and we are we are trying to make the efforts to uh, get this done. So one way of looking at it is, uh, uh, heat team coming in. They, we started off in Bombay, tried to. Iron out our deficiencies, move out to Delhi, and slowly till the time things get, I mean, things work out, and we we are able to reach a certain level of confidence in in the way we are doing things. We will ob obviously move it uh, across all the centers and try to make it as uh, similar as possible. But as I said, the uh, the conditions are different, and uh, we have our challenges there. Uh, I leave it now to the coaches to answer, probably on a more technical point. So, Coach Peter. Um. I'll just back up what um, BJ just said. Every centre has the same common goals, and that is to produce, to produce the best possible athletes uh, we can. Um, every centre has positives and negatives, so um, and we all have different systems of dry land, pool space, mm. timing, so forth, so on. Right. So um, we all have one common goal. Um, Bush, myself, and Parker communicate on a regular basis, and we chat about different ideas we have. So we all have. Um, what's best at hand for the athletes and what's best for Gaff. Coach Partha? Yeah, I think we have a common goal of developing the swimmer, for sure, in all the centers. But again, as DJ no. pointed out really well, that each center have different structure, different need and different challenges. So based on the need and challenges, the program has been designed for optimal performance in each center. So it's not necessary that you know um, the uh, the structure what Delhi have or the program what Delhi have should be equal to the program what Mumbai have or should be equal to the program what Bhushan have. So it based on the need, it based on the uh, overall support system and the challenges. Coach uh, Bhushan, no, I fully agree, agree with whatever uh, Peter and uh, Partha said. Ultimately, see, it, it, the goal is, the goal is common. Ultimately, all of us have the junior national, senior national, the main targets to swim. Okay. Uh, Heath, yeah. would you like to add something to this? Um, is it still the question about being able to access uh, central resources, or has uh, have we moved off of that a little bit? We can speak on both of these things. Yeah, I mean, so if we're talking about central resources like nutrition and sports science and dry land training and all of these kinds of things, yes, we are again working towards that. I think there's a, a couple of uh, you know, this whole lockdown thing has really helped us all adopt um, technology and digital interfacing and things like that. So I think that being able to access some of our Bombay resources for sports science and medicine is going to become a lot easier for us in future. Um, but I think the actual plan of how we're going to do that and how we're going to implement that is probably going to be decided on uh, fairly soon and then once we've got a proper structure in place then yes you will be able to get access to sports science sports psychology sports nutrition sports physiotherapy injury advice um, you know there's a whole suite of sports science and medicine services that will be available to you um, we just have to try and figure out how we're going to do it that's all yeah so uh, just to sum this entire thing up as we said the aim is to have um, uh, all the centers being uh, run through, uh, uh, what can I say, the philosophy is the same, but when it comes down right now, even the philosophy of all the centers are same, but the execution would be different based on uh, our different parameters and as and when the, the, the centers grow and we are able to uh, do things better. So just to give you an example, when we started sports science with Heath around three or four years ago, it is very different from where we are right now. Uh, and we've grown, we've learned, uh, we've stumbled, we've got up again. So uh, the whole 
challenge here is to is to put a system in place which will give the maximum benefit to the uh, uh, to the swimmer so yes we are working towards this uh, that is the aim but there to say that everything would be totally homogeneous is 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 a bit difficult so uh, i'm going to the next question yeah so um, recovery during the competitions between heats and finals what are the best practices any specific food amount of rest sleep etc peter you could start with this um, each child is different um, routines very important uh, i'm also a big fan of just switching off whether that be read a book watch tv uh, but definitely have a good meal uh, have a rest uh, try not to think about the race because that's nervous energy you know, burn um, so I would just uh, go home, get yourself in a routine. Uh, I would say go home, have your normal lunch, uh, watch a bit of TV, watch a video, what are you going to do, do some social interaction, then have a rest, and then um, get ready and, and head to the finals. Right, um, sir, you want to add something to this? Yeah, I totally agree with uh, Peter. Each child is different, so they might be needing something different for the recovery based on the kind of lactic production they do or kind of lactic removal they do. But again, the basic structure is after their event, they should ensure that they relax properly at least 800 meter long and easy. That is very important. So active recovery is very important. Then they go back home. I generally prefer for our swimmers to um, have early lunch and then um, take a small nap and then at least two hours before, before they come for the final, they should be uh, they should be watching TV, listening to music and stuff like that. That is, <coughs> I think it's a good way of recovery. You should not be sleeping just before the event. You know that's that's not a very good sign. Thank okay. you. Yeah, according to me, um, it depends. See, there are a lot of places where you go for a competition and you don't have a warm down pool. Then in that case, what will you do? So best is immediately come out, start stretching and finish your therapeutic exercises, do some breathing exercises, get back home. And even before you go to competition, make sure that you know the location. If you know that there's a warm down pool, it's best to finish your race. And what generally we do is we do a 20 minute swim down, 20 minute easy swim, so that your lactate is removed, you recover faster, you're preparing for the next uh, finals. If you have not much time, for example, you have two events, one in the beginning of the heat, so one towards the end of the heat, and you have another final starting in two-hour session, then what you do? You have to manage yourself. I said you have to really get tough mentally and physically. All this happens in the practice. So by me, you finish your heats, go do a good 20 minutes from down, have your car carbohydrate, I mean, your uh, protein shake, go back home, have your early lunch, try and get at least about an hour of nap, then come back to the pool for the finals. Yeah. Keith, would you want to add something to it? No. Look, I, I think it's been answered extremely well from all the coaches. There's not a lot to add to it. I think that the main thing as an athlete is that you, you know, you can have the best coaches, the best sports scientists, the best physios, the best of everything. At the end of the day, the performance is with you. You need to take accountability for your own performance. It's not your coach's responsibility or your parents' responsibility or any else, anybody else's responsibility. So you need to develop your own systems and strategies. You should ask your parents or your coaches or your sports scientists for the support and ask them different ideas that you have. But developing a methodology for competition is extremely important. You need to build over years and years of practice what works best for you. Uh, I've seen athletes who uh, on the day of a competition, by the time I get to their room before breakfast even, they've got earphones in their ears. They don't want to even say good morning. All they want to do is just listen to music and shut the world out and then take their iPod or their, their headphones off and jump straight in the for their warm-up and other athletes want to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk um, you know and everybody has their different strategy but you've got to develop your strategy over time um, and uh, it won't happen today and suddenly in the next competition you'll you do, do everything perfectly you've got to keep working and it takes some notes keep a diary work on building out your performance strategy um, and you'll get there okay 
Um, I've just put a link uh, on the chat window. It's a simple poll. So uh, can I request the parents and swimmers to take that poll? We will uh, we will take a break of around 40 seconds and then uh, come back. So just uh, click on the link and see if you can just go to the poll and vote. Me as well? Uh, no, no, coaches will not do it. Peter, Peter I'm staying away from Peter. Enough to vote, Peter. Oh, Peter, I'm staying away from The most handsome is coming later. <laughs> Peter, I'm staying away from you. <laughs> Coach, Coach Michael said, stay away from the people who are toxic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to mention that. <laughs> I wasn't feeding the monkey, sorry. <laughs> I'll get some nuts. Ba I, I had said that uh, the poll for the most handsome is going to be put up by BJ later. Then we'll all decide. We'll vote for you then. Hot coach of Mumbai. Okay, guys. <laughs> hey, hey, that's a given, okay, buddy. That's a given. You know what? You know what? We, we should actually have a poll for who's got the most hair because I'm looking at all of us over here and there's a bunch of us that are looking a little bit thin on top, guys. We've got we to gotta work for <laughs> Huh? Bush? Hey, yeah. yeah. I have gone. I'm the winner. Look, look, okay. there's nothing oh, up here. Yeah. Can, can we can we restart? Yes, yes, restart yes. I hope you voted. You can reply on the chat box. Yes. <clears throat> you can reply on the Both chat box. Okay, it. great, fantastic. Okay. Uh so Uh, the next question. This is um, a, a question which we, which probably we've come across multiple times. So, yeah. um, on swimmer's parent is saying, my daughter is ten years old, born on twenty first December. I wanted to know how much does the birth month depend in terms of performance while competing in the age category. So, oh, can, I take, can I take this first? I'll start with Bhushan first. I know it's a, yeah. it's, it's a topic. Yeah. Um, um, who's this? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the name right now. It's I, I okay. Okay. Can you put it okay. On the <laughs> see, okay, ultimately, see, yeah, let me take this. See, I would say 31st December or Jan 1st will not make a difference when they're all at the age of 14. They're all grown up completely. So I keep telling, irrespective of your age group, you just have to keep swim, swimming. Make sure that your technique is right, you build your endurance, start enjoying your sport, and just look at competing when you're 14 and keep improving till then and when 15 it doesn't matter if you're january born or december born or 2011 or 2012 born they're all the same and at one point of time you will surely be swimming in the open nationals and the asian age group or whatever asian games and common games these are not age group competition they're all open categories please don't okay. worry about coach if the kid is born on 31st december yeah Peter? Um, I back VJ here. Uh, I back Bush here, sorry. Um, too many swimmers swim for medals rather than personal best times. I think you control your own destiny, try and prove your own personal best times, and the rest will take care of itself. Uh, Coach uh, Partha? Yeah, I think firstly we need to understand: Are we swimming for age group, or we are swimming to, as to be a better swimmer for future? And I think the motto of Glenmark overall to develop the swimmer to a senior level and ensure that they outperform for the country or for the nation. Uh, in that context, I would come to it that okay, yeah, this month doesn't matter much. One, the other factor is of course THB. The uh, growth growth velocity. So you know it may happen that some kid may have less amount of biological age, but the growth is much higher. So not necessary, you know, that it's going to be similar. So once again, I come back to the same thing. It's not the age, what you need to see. I'm backing Peter that whether they are improving in a steady growth rate and uh, whether they are working hard on their technique. Thank you. Vijay, next one. Yes, what's the second? Uh, okay, uh, this is a question which probably um, 
we've discussed again many times. So there are swimmers who perform average during training sessions, but perform remarkably well in competitions, and they are termed as race horses. And there are swimmers who are better, uh, who are better than the work horses who train well but put up a mediocre show in meets. What do you do, What do you want to say about such swimmers, race horses, and work horses? Peter, we'll start with you. Okay, thank you for referring to our children as as horses. That's great. Um, just there's lots of people in the world who just keep knocking at the door, and eventually the door will open. You just got to control your own destiny. Work hard, and success will come. I have numerous swimmers in my program who aren't that talented, but they work hard and they work extremely hard in training, dedicate themselves, and have gained success. Yeah, you know, some people are naturally talented. That's just the way life is. Musical instruments, same as schoolwork. You can't control what anyone else does. You only control your own destiny. Just keep working hard, and success will come. Peter, what about what uh, Michael had said? He said, talent will always beat hard work well, as exactly. long as talent is prepared to work hard, right? So yeah. you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're not willing to work hard, you're going nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that in writing. Okay, yeah. Coach Partha? Yeah, I, I mean, we have seen this. You know, some kids, they may not be a very good performer in training but they outperform in uh, competition it's not that they are not trying but they are trying their best in practice but they didn't they don't manage to push themselves to the extent of other sumo but they do perform well in the competition uh, like positive race horses and there are certain swimmers who really do very well in practice but they don't do the outcome as per the way they have done the practice um, it is natural it happens to many swimmers as a coach the only thing what we can do we can customize their tapper i mean uh, the tapering need to be customized for these two different categories and that gives a better impact and that's the only thing uh, I think um, I would recommend. So customize the tapper for these two categories, identify these categories and customize them. So first category would be needing more rest in tapper and the second category you know, should not be reducing the volume and intensity that much compared to the first category and they will still perform well. Yeah, okay. once again, once again, I, I would say the same thing again. Hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. Very simple as that. And the kids who are talented, they're very complacent. They think they can just do uh, a mediocre training and they still win. But yes, they can win to a certain extent. Maybe two years, three years, four years, till they're 14, 15. After that, they're all stuck. They're all stuck. And you, you have so many examples. We've seen so many kids who were, who were nowhere under 10, under 12, and they've started doing very well when, they, when they're 14, 15, 16. So, and please don't think that just because someone is talented, they can always win. Yeah, next okay. question. Next question. Uh, this is again Aryan Jaiswal. Whether we should concentrate on improving the technique strokes or we should focus solely on improving speed. And there's a request for, um, in addition to our coaches, for Coach Yogesh also to answer this. So we start again with Peter. Uh, technique is extremely important. Um, it's the cornerstone of your success. Um, you've got to judge yourself how much technique work, how much endurance work, how much speed work, um, what different strokes they are doing. Um, most of my young ones do multiple strokes to a certain age and then they start specifying. But yeah, technique's the cornerstone, but also you need a good aerobic base, the ability to do you know, lactate work, the ability to do you know, VO2 max work, so forth, so on. Okay, so it's not just one. Uh, one little piece, it's a whole jigsaw. Okay, uh, Coach Partha? Yeah, for me, the performance uh, goes like this. The sequence goes like this. Develop technique, add up technique. Add up technique is basically endurance, and then go for speed. You cannot bypass this sequence. So develop technique first, then add up technique through your endurance, and then go for speed work. Coach Bhushan? See, it's a combination of both. You cannot say, I'm going to only train speed today. I'm going to swim only technique today. If you ask me, you put me in the water, ask me to do a good freestyle, I can swim. But can you hold the same technique, a good technique when you're fatigued is the question. That's why I said it has to be a combination of both. Training and technique has to be hand in hand. And okay. this is the coach's job to do it on the deck and give them feedback. The moment you see some something wrong, immediately correct it. Okay. Coach Yogesh yeah. Kagatra, there is a request that you also should answer this question. 
So can you unmute and answer? Yogesh sir, you there? Bush has lunch, Bush. <laughs> I saw it, Bush. I saw it. So, McDonald's, was it? Okay, so I got a message from uh, Coach uh, uh, Coach Kagatra. He says that I feel good technique work is the most important thing, and that will we need to improve on that. Right. So, fantastic. So we will go to the next question. Uh, this is. Uh, yeah, should swimmers stay in a hostel or with their parents? Which is more beneficial for the top level swimmer? No, is it a hostel or hotel? Hostel. Is it is during competition? Is no, it no, 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 during no. competition or training? No, this is regarding uh, what we do at Delhi, where we have residential. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So, Coach Partha, would you like to take this? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Uh, should a swimmer stay in a hostel or with their parents? Which one is more beneficial for top level swimmers? It depends again. In, it depends on the kind of environment uh, they would be getting if they are staying in ho uh, hostel or the kind of environment they will be getting if they are staying in home. Uh, for me, uh, uh, hostel is more, uh, I'll give hostel uh, uh, upper hand compared to staying with the parents. Okay. Uh, Peter, would you like to uh, say something on this with your experience of you know kids traveling and staying at different places when they go to train? I think um, you need to have a mixture. When they're younger, I've got no problem with their parents traveling with them and staying um, staying with them at meets and so forth, so on, right? But I think we need to start making the children more independent and more self-sufficient. So you need to find that happy mixture where sometimes the parents travel, sometimes the parents don't travel, or the parents come after a certain few days. Um, kids need to learn how to be independent. Right, yeah. Uh, my view is, um, I would say till 14 years of age, I would say that the kids would should, live, should stay with the parents. But at some point of time, when you grow older, when you're 15, 16, 17, when you start representing your country, you will surely be a part of the team camping and competition where you'll be traveling and staying with the team. So that uh, allows you to bond with your team. Okay. A voting time again, a 30 second break, a voting time again, please go and uh, click on the link and vote please. And once you're done, please put a yes on the chat so that we know when to start. Peter, how are the cats? Peter, how are the cats doing? They're going well, mate. Um, they they had their moments of madness, but they're good. Good. Uh, cats will have uh, this. In case you voted, voted, please put a yes in the chat box so that we know, and then we can start. <coughs> Bush, your your profile picture is better than you. Look at you. You're 12 there. <laughs> you actually had hair. It's a very own picture. <laughs> what, were you, what were you, 15? <laughs> yeah. See? Jesus. Um, guys, uh, I, I might need to drop off shortly. Are there any more questions that uh, are for me, or can you I? Could, you could take a break. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can, you can. I just, I just got to. No, there's only one question. Me. There's only one question for you, so we'll just take it right away. Okay. Uh, right. So, um, can you just put in your chat box if you've voted, so we can move ahead? This is a second question. Um, so, okay, okay. So here's a question. <laughs> All the coaches and heat. How do you think this lockdown is going to affect the swimmers? Now that we know that it can be under two or three months till our kids get into the water. Uh, that's at least what a Mumbai kids are expecting. So the point is, how do you want? To, uh, how do you think it's going to affect the swimmers? So we start with you, Peter. Uh, we go with the coaches and then end up with heat. Okay, 
I think we are going very well. Um, I think this is a difficult situation for everyone in the world. Everyone's in the same boat. And I think GAF in India especially are at the forefront of initiatives and ideas. Um, what we're doing in Mumbai is um, very good. I'm sure Bangalore and Delhi are doing the same things. Um, but we must be prepared the best we can be. So when we go back to the water, we are prepared to start work from the work get go. So get a good aerobic base as much as possible, try and keep our core strength up, our flexibility and our strength. So it's very important that we keep together as a team also. You know, the, the secret is that we're better together than by ourselves. So I think we're doing a very good job. I think the communication between the parents and the staff and the swimmers is outstanding. And we're all coping in different ways. It's a difficult time, but I'm, I think we're doing very well. Uh, Coach Parka? Yeah, I think lockdown will affect adversely for all the swimmers in the country, in India. But in that context, I would say Glenmark Aquatic Foundation swimmers have an advantage because we are running our dryland program, as Peter said, right now in the morning. And um, they are under some program and they are also uh, gathering some information which will help them to swim better in future. So um, though it will, um, it will be adverse for all the swimmers in terms of performance at this point, but in long run, it will be helpful if the swimmers are following that. And as gap swimmer, they have a add-on advantage compared to the other swimmers. Coach Bhushan? Yes. No, it's the similar condition for the entire swimmers in the, uh, for, for the country. But again, like we said, we have been doing this aerobic condition and some strength work on the dry land, on the ground, by each and every kid. If they all come with the same weight, which they went back from the pool, I will make sure that they're into shape in the next four weeks. I can say that. Keith? Yeah, this is, uh, you, you know, you have to turn every um, obstacle into a challenge, every adversity into a success, right? So right now, uh, everybody's got a level playing field around the world. Most of us are not lucky enough to have access to gyms and cardio equipment and all kinds of other stuff so that we can do our dry land training properly. Most of us are doing dry uh, body weight dry land training with uh, elastic bands and so on. So we need to really do as much as we can to focus on rehabilitating any niggling injuries that we had with our lower backs or our core or any area of our body and and if anybody needs help with that please uh, just speak to VJ and he will put you in touch with our team and we will work on helping you with any of your injuries secondly we need to work on mobility flexibility core stability shoulder stability um, so that when we come out of this lockdown period, the body is really fit and strong in terms of normal human movement and biomechanics. We should not be going to the coaches after three days being back in the pool and saying, my shoulder is sore or my back is sore or this is sore or that sore because we've got this golden opportunity right now <laughs> to building really fit, strong bodies so that all we've got to focus on when we get back is uh, swimming really well. So I think if anybody is not happy with their dry land training program that they're doing at the moment, now is the time to reach out to us via VJ and Nilesh or one of the top coaches, the Bhushan, Partha or Peter. And we will help uh, design that program so that by the time the lockdown is finished, you guys are really physically fit and strong uh, to get back to your swimming quickly and make gains much faster than everybody else. Okay, thank you so much, Heath. Uh, Heath is leaving right now. I uh, want to thank you for everything. And uh, uh, it's been awesome. Uh, the other thing is, uh, there. Uh, we, the first question we ran today on the poll was, uh, should we do this webinar series again? And uh, well, 98% have voted yes. So uh, we are planning towards uh, running a webinar series again. Uh, you will have to give us a couple of days to finalize the schedule and uh, see what all topics we need to add is if you guys have any specific recommendations uh, please whatsapp it to me uh, this is Vijay you can just whatsapp it to me and we'll see what we can do because there's also a function of availability and the time required for preparing um, a lot of uh, sessions so what we'll do is uh, uh, we are working towards it you'll probably hear from us in the next couple of days but uh, meanwhile if you could send us any um, feedback it would be great uh, thank you Heath Thanks very much, everybody. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, Heath. Bye, mate. Bye-bye.
Okay, um, I'm moving on to the next question. It says, how, uh, how many times in a year should a, a performance athlete peak? So generally, what is the program of tapering and peaking of your, uh, of your workout should be? Um, and basically, it's uh, directed to all the coaches. Yeah. Okay. Um, my guys normally peak, uh, my guys normally taper two or three times a year, uh, depending on the athlete. Some athletes have to taper for the state titles to be able to get to the national titles, and some some athletes have the ability to swim through the state titles to go to nationals. So that's very much a communication between the coach and the swimmer. But my swimmers normally taper two or three times a year. Um, minor meets, they may do what we call a drop dead taper, which is two or three days of rest. But I think your major meets, your nationals, your international meets, your junior nationals are the three major meets for the year. So I would say two or three times a year. Okay. Uh, coach. Yeah, uh, same line, Peter. I think um, a swimmer should max taper for two to three times in a year. And again, based on the need of the swimmer. So what we feel, what I feel that each swimmer should know their target meets. For example, a junior swimmer, um, they should have their target for junior national and school national. A midi, middle age swimmer, they should have their target for maybe junior or senior national, Hello India, or maybe some international exposure meet. Maybe three, three times they can get the peak. So it depends on the swimmer's target meet. But this target meet cannot be more than three in a year. It cannot be more than three in a year. That's what my opinion. Yeah, I think what <clears throat> I back whatever Bhatta and Peter said. You can probably um, taper and peak twice or thri three times a year. And if it's for the younger kids like 9, 10, 11, 12, they can keep racing. They don't need much of a taper at all. A fully grown adult in the age of 16, 17, 18, they need a good taper and probably they can just do two races in a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so uh, the next question is, how much long break is good enough to get back to normal practice? Uh, do balance between school and swimming mostly during 10th and 12th? Oh, sorry. So the point is, how That's much like long break? So basically, the, the, the question is that during the uh, 10th and the 12th standard exams in India, Peter, <coughs> uh, is, is, is there are two very important years in the Indian education system where your marks matter. Uh, so a, a 10 standard uh, basically yeah. uh, helps you to choose your stream yeah. and a 12 standard basically helps you get into graduate school. So in case they take a break, uh, what is the, okay. <coughs> sorry, I'm speaking, sorry. How much of a good, how much of a okay. break is good enough to get back to normal practice? Okay. okay. This is a, this is a very common question, which is, um, which is quite a my head in since I've been in India. Um, where children disappear for six or seven weeks at a time. Um, you need to have communication between the parents, the swimmers, and the coach. The swimmers should be able to do some type of work every week. You may occasionally miss a week or so, right? But it's very important they keep their feel for the water. Yeah, they are like fish. They must be in the water, keeping their feel for the water. Doesn't mean they're going to do 10 sessions a week, but they come along and do three or four or whatever they can manage. But it's really important that time management skills are the key. Communication between the parents and the coach is the key. Communication between the swimmer and the coach is the key. You must stay in the water. After a major meet, it's okay to have a couple of weeks break. <coughs> when you're doing exams, you should be able to train yeah, not at a high level, but at an aerobic level where you keep a reasonable fitness base. Coach Partha? I agree with Peter. I think uh, what a swimmer need is recovery. A swimmer doesn't need a break. So generally, the, it goes like this way. So they uh, learn, they adapt, they overload themselves, they prepare for competition, they do tapper before competition, and then they recover. So, you know, in a lot of cases, we also have to give break because our kids are in boarding schools or uh, they're in the boarding system. But I'm not a person who's a big believer of, um, of break. I'm a person who's a believer of recovery and recovery come from practice. They can do easy and moderate practice. We can modify that, but um, not a total rest in my view. 
Okay. Okay. Once you finish the competition, uh, you all know that you'll be racing again in the next year, right? What I would say is, in, uh, after a major meet, you take a week's break. It doesn't matter. But after that, instead of taking a long break, you go to pool at least four times a week, spend one hour doing some aerobic, and please improve your skills of turnings and technique and your stroke. So this will keep you going so that once you start your, once you resume your training on full flash, you don't have to struggle. So if you can manage to swim at least four hours a week with some aerobic and some good technique on improving your stroke, that will give you a good benefit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question is, um, my daughter is nine years old. She's training for the last one and a half years, but her performance is not good. And her timing is also not improving. How do I decide if she's made for this sport or not? I think Smita should answer this question. I don't think Smita is here. Me? Yeah? Uh, I didn't find Smita here. So, uh, would you Yeah, like to... I can answer. I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I can answer the question very well. Uh, Mr. Mr. The person, whoever the person who has asked uh, should first know what the what the daughter is actually doing in the sense is she a competitive swimmer or she is learning the strokes maybe at the age of nine she is still not able to do all the strokes you know so you cannot just comment he my daughter is not improving first a nine year old has to learn all the four strokes proper strokes enjoy the swimming it is the parents who are always in a rush for improvement and then you have many i have seen this in mumbai and there are many parents as such you know who are just waiting for the improvement waiting for a medal and if they don't do you know they don't win you can find many swimmers at the age of 10 who retire so called retire okay so i think that under 10 let the children enjoy let them learn the different skill let them learn all the proper strokes and then you think about the competition. Every child is not the same. Don't compare your child with somebody else. That's all I have to say. Okay. Um, I, I mean, uh, I think we've got the best person uh, to answer that question. Thank you, Smita, miss. Okay. Uh, the next question is, um, can Partha, sir, provide some daily schedule alignment in boarding school scenario? It will help the other center parents to work with their kids' school support for additional support. So, uh, Parthu sir, what they basically want to know is how do you structure your program, I guess. Okay, uh, our program structure goes like this. Uh, we start around 5.15 in the morning and the kids train till 7.15. And then they um, go for their breakfast and they have their school around 8 to 8.30, depending on the kind of school they are studying in. Uh, they got some special permission to waive a class in certain schools. And uh, they come back home uh, depending on the school. So, 12 to 1 o'clock by which they generally come back home. They have their lunch immediately and then they take a small nap. Uh, afternoon class start around 3.45 and we stretch it till uh, 6.30 generally. So this is our general schedule. And right after 6.30, generally the kids go for their study. And uh, we actually have a combination of border and non-border. It's about 60-40 ratio. So 60% are border and 40% are non-border. So everyone follows the same pattern and schedule. And it works both for border and non-border. OK. Uh, so uh, again, coming back to your question, I would just add a couple of points. Uh, it's 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 that more or less the, the the timings of across all the all the centers are more or less streamlined. It's not too different, and uh, the coaches manage within that time time which they have got, right? So um, okay, I'm going to the next question, which says. Um, at present, there are many competitions around. Question is, can we, with the help of SAI and Glenmark, uh, reduce few non-important competitions and concentrate in regular practice? For this, Glenmark might, should help us. Uh, would you like to answer that, Partho, sir? Uh, we, we are, as you can see, we have reduced our target meet, right? So what we have reduced is we have reduced our target meet to junior nationals, senior nationals, Hello India, any international meet where Denmark is taking part, any international meet where Team India is taking part. So these are the target meet what we have reduced to. Apart from that, all the other meets, whatever we have, we don't encourage our swimmer 
to um, be part of it. But there are certain meet we also understand, like CBC National, where they need to take part because of their schools. School National, they need to take part because of their schools. Uh, there are certain Delhi state meet where they are bound to take part because of the scholarship. So the uh, but for all these meets, we actually uh, allow them to go for the meet, but they come back and practice on the same day. We have seen that in many uh, cases, they do their practice in the morning, then they go for the meet, they come in the evening, do some recovery practice, but they are not allowed to skip those uh, practice session at that part of competition. That's what we do. <coughs> Anything we want to add, Bhushan sir or Peter sir? No, they are they're the important competition. See, for example, Karnataka and Maharashtra, the state meet is so important. If you do a little bit of mistake, you are out of the nationals. So, you uh, you know what? The Karnataka state meet, you definitely have to depot. If not, it's going to be a tough job for you. Karnataka state meet and nationals, then senior state and nationals, then you have school games and kilo. Uh, these are the meets which are important. You can't reduce either of them unless you take your own decision, which you don't want to swim. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Peter, you want to add something or can I move to the next question? No, go, move on. Yeah, move on. Okay. So the next question is a general question. Uh, it said, does all the GAF yeah. centers follow the same workout training method? Or? Yeah. Uh, so, does all the, the, do all the center GAF centers follow the same workout training method or individual methods? Is there good practices shared across center to help swimmers? Uh, now, before I go to the coaches, I would uh, just make a comment here. As we said very clearly that each center is, is unique with the set of issues which are unique to the pool. The philosophy at the top level of GAF is constant. <clears throat> all the GAF coaches across uh, India I do have a meeting once a month at least where coaches from Delhi and Bangalore do come over to Bombay with the top management where every issue is discussed and there is regular exchange of knowledge. Now I'm going to leave it to the coaches to give you some individual um, additions to this. But at a corporate level, please be assured that uh, the uh, the philosophy at the top level is, is common. Uh, Peter, you want to add something to it? Okay. Um I know that Push, myself and Partha chat on a regular basis about ideas we have and sets we are doing in training. Um, everyone has their strengths, weaknesses. Uh, Partha's got a 50 metre pool, I've got a 25 metre pool. Uh, Partha's governed by government restrictions, I'm governed by other, other problems. Bush has got other problems as well. But as for training wise, we all have the, the common goals of making the best athletes we can. We do communicate, we do have similar goals. But we don't follow the same programs. Okay, Coach Parker. I think I'll just go by what Vijay and Peter have said. I totally agree with that. I don't have anything to add in this. Uh, uh, Coach Bhushan, would you like to add something? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll back you up, guys. There's actually, you know what? There's not much of a difference. It's just the same. Um, uh, the way of, it, it, you know, executing is might be different, but the uh, process and theory is the same. Yeah, so uh, just to put this into perspective, I don't think there's a template in any sport anywhere which a single coach or a single person has mastered. Uh, each, yeah. each coach has his own style. Uh, but as we said, there's a central philosophy in terms of how we approach that, uh, approach our uh, task. And that is probably common across all the centers. Uh, with this, there's one more question which says that um, uh, whether a swimmer's training at GAF, GSC or any other center can visit other GAF centers for training for two, three weeks a year so that swimmer gains from the experience techniques of all coaches. So, actually is that, uh, you know, uh, we leave all these uh, uh, calls to be left with individual coaches. Uh, uh, each each coach, each, res each coach is responsible for uh, the kid who's training under that, under him or her. And if there is a belief that a, a swimmer may gain by going to a different uh, center or not, it's, it's something which we leave to an individual coach. Uh, there is no policy or there's no program that people will come and train for X amount of days or Y amount of days in a different pool. Also realize, as we said earlier, that in a place like a Bombay or a Bangalore, uh, there are places in terms of where are you going to keep the kids. There is an issue of lane space. So a lot of other things come into the perspective. But again, I'm going to throw it open to the coaches on their views. I've purely spoken from an administrative perspective. Uh, let me see it from a coaching perspective. You want to start with Partha this time? 
I think it's totally based on the coach's decision. You know, what kind of um, uh, idea they have, what kind of planning they have for that particular amount of uh, for that particular kid, and whether they want that kid to go abroad or whether they want the kid to go to some other center. Uh, that depend on the planning for that particular swimmer. So it's coaches generally who's supposed to decide. Peter. Um, the relationship that Porsche and Path and I have is that we trust each other. So if my swimmers have to go train with Path or Bush for a week, I have no issues with that whatsoever. Uh, it's all about one having one common goal and that's being what's best for the athlete. So um, yeah, each case is individual, but um, I know that a few of my swimmers have been with Bush and open water swims and a few of my swimmers have gone to Gully to train with Path during competition. So, you know, Partha, Push and I have a great relationship and we have no fears about each other, helping each other out. I agree with that. What Bhushan? Yeah, it's the same. I think that should be okay. I don't think we should uh, stop or not allow. If, the people, if somebody is interested, absolutely, they can actually go train for a week or so. But again, I would not suggest you to do that during a peak training season, not just before a competition. Maybe during an off-season is fine. So essentially, I'll come down and put this into a into a perspective. As I said, there are issues with respect to, uh, 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 I mean, things like uh, administrative issues in terms of getting permissions, in terms of uh, managing, of, uh, you know, uh, the administrative places where we are. So each uh, each swimmer is is actually registered and fees paid for and X Y Z and a lot of other things which also need to be sorted. But essentially, the bottom line is this: it is with respect to the coaches of each center. We would, in case you're interested in doing something like this, please contact your head coach. And this is not a blanket policy, but something which we can do to a case to case basis. Uh, okay. And the next question is, so according to all coaches, besides break once in a week, you need recovery swim session, maybe once in a week. Is this true? We start with uh, Peter. Okay. We just had this discussion with Michael Ball this morning, who was, um, probably one of the world's best coaches, coached numerous Olympic swimmers. What parents think and what swimmers think in recovery is not sitting on the side of the pool and banana lounge having cocktails. You can do recovery swimming with a, with a pool boy or easy technique or descending sets or spike sets, whatever the case may be. So when you say recovery, it's all in the mind of the swimmer and the coach and the parent. What the parents think is recovering, what the swimmers think of recovery are two different things. And what the coach thinks of recovering, what the swimmer thinks of recovering are two different things. Trust your coach to guide you the best. Coach Partha? Yeah, as, as Peter said uh, very nicely that, you know, recovery depends on the need of the, of the program and the swimmers and uh, what are the long term goal for that swimmer and uh, the recovery planned in that manner. So, you know, a swimmer may not understand also a parent the way they think of the recovery or the swimmer, the way they think of the recovery may not be equal to the way the coach is thinking of the recovery. But I agree with the fact that yes, recovery is needed, but the way the recovery is needed depending on the long-term plan a swimmer has. Bhushan? Huh, the recovery again uh, plays an important role, but again, it's not that, like Peter said, you can, you can do a lot of recovery swims, but it's not once a week. It depends on which part of the season are you training. If it's in the peak season, if you're doing a good quality of amount of set, you might have two recovery sessions even in a week too. And sometimes you may not have recovery for two, three weeks also. It depends on which which part of the season you're training at. Okay, uh, so I think this is the last question if I have uh, uh, yeah. uh, missed it. So last question is, uh, what do you think is the future of swimming and swimmers in India? Uh, so uh, you want to start with... Um, can we go reverse this time? So I want to yeah. start with Bush. Okay. So this is fantastic. If you look at what we, when we started, GAF started in 2015, January. Uh, if you look at this five years, there's been a tremendous progress towards Indian swimming. It's just not about GAF centers in Indian swimming itself. And I've been a part of Indian swimming since 1980. I've seen swimming for the last 40 years. But if you look at 1980 to 1990 to 2000 to 2010, there's a big progress. And if you can see, now um, we had very few kids who touch a B qualifying. Now, look at that. We have so many kids from India who have done a B quad, not in just one event, a couple of events. So I'm sure if given a try, um, 
uh, and there are a lot of female kids, female swimmers who give up swimming. How many swimmers in girls section, women category swim after 18? Very few, very few. So this is not what we want. We want the kids to swim at least till they're 22, 23 in the boys and the girls so that I'm sure they'll be, uh, I'm sure we can see a good, uh, see a good progress in Indian swimming. Yeah, Arthur. Yeah, I back Bhushan totally in this. Indian swimming is progressing like the, I mean, at their best. Uh, six swimmers have got the B qualifying timing, which I, we haven't seen before. And um, some of the swimmers got more than one event in B qualifying timing. Now, let me explain to you what is what they have achieved. Earlier, the time cut for B cut qualifying timing was much easier in this Olympics, especially for Japan. Since the number of swimmer who can participate in Olympic has been restricted much lesser and also there are additional of event, the beaker timing become really tough and despite of that six Indian swimmer achieving that is pretty good. However, I still feel the improvement rate of boys is much better compared to the improvement rate of girls. So this is some idea where we actually kind of need to look forward and try to India should produce more top swimmer in girls segment also. Peter. Um, I agree with Partha and Bush. I think swimming has come a long way since I've been here since 2017. Um, the swimming stand has improved, but we must keep pushing the envelope and try to get some May qualifying times um, with the ongoing support of the Glenmark Federation of Glen and Neha. Uh, we're on the right track. It's not easy. I mean, it takes you know, six to eight years to produce a world-class program, and you must be patient and you must be willing to make the sacrifices required. But I think we're on the right track. Okay, uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, but before we end, I think uh, it is absolutely important that this question be answered with somebody by somebody who's seen Indian swimming very closely across all this time. Smita, ma'am, can you come in? I think you're uh, being a swimmer yourself in the 80s and being and coaching swimmers all this time and in now in 2020, what do you think is the difference and where do you see Indian swimming go? Indian swimming is very different as of now. There are so many more facilities that are there. See, I was swimming in, in the 70s and early 80s. Uh, it was much different during that time. We didn't have proper pools. We didn't have proper lanes to swim. We did not swim with face cloths. We didn't have any scientific backing for swimming. Now it is very different and you should be very thankful at GAP that we are getting all this. Even now in a place like Mumbai or in various districts and states, you don't get all these facilities to, to swim with. So you as competitors, you all should be very thankful that you are getting all this and we are going to try to do much better. Only thing you have to understand that the uh, target which GAF has is very different from the target that many other institutions have. So bear with us and you will get the fruits of all this. Okay, guys. So uh, before we end, uh, one request. Uh, do you think we should continue these sessions? If yes, just put yes on the chat box. And uh, if, you have an, uh, if you have some ideas for what sessions we should be doing, please WhatsApp it to me. Uh, you have my number and uh, put it in the chat as well. But I would like to hear from... Uh, uh, parents, we hope to uh, finalize something over the next couple of days and get back to you. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you to all the coaches, uh, all the people who presented, everybody from Heath Matthews' team. Thank you to Ananya. Thank you to Yash. Thank you to Chetna, Fatima, uh, Peter, Smita, Yogesh sir, Satish, uh, Clement, Partha, Baskar, Bhushan, uh, Guru Prasad. I hope I've taken the names. Uh, Nitin, in case I've forgotten, I'm sorry. But it's a complete thank to your entire set of people who made this happen.